Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over the ALR300 for the Mirage F1 EE. This is the more advanced RWR that is only in the EE version for the Mirage F1. First you have to make sure it's equipped. In the mission editor, click on your plane, and then click the blue button with the three lines. And for RWR type, make sure it says ALR300. If it says BF, then that is the old one. Let's go over all the controls. First is the power switch right here. Here is the main RWR display. Here's the control panel. And this one that says RAP plus CME is the volume control. First, you need to power it on by coming over here and flipping up the switch that says RWR. And you can see it is powered on now. You can use this switch right here to adjust the brightness. This is a top-down display, so threats will show up in a bird's eye view. For example, if something shows up on the top right, that means that it is in front of you and over to the right. Let me get into the air to show you what it looks like. As you can see, there is an S, which is a search radar, and it is in front of me to the right, so that is telling me there is a search radar somewhere over there. And if I look on the F10 map, that is accurate. You can see here I am, and up in front of me and to the right, there is a search radar. Keep in mind the RWR has two blind spots, one above you and one below you. The more dangerous a threat is, the closer it will be to the outside. The danger is based on what type of radar it is and how strong the signal is. So if something has a really strong signal, that means it's probably closer to you, so it will be farther toward the outside. And let's say there's two threats. One of them is a search radar and one of them is an enemy airplane. The search radar will be very close because it's not a very big threat. However, the enemy airplane obviously is a lot more dangerous, so it will be towards the outside. For example, I have a SAM site locking me right now, and you can see there's a BB and there's a 10. The BB is the searching radar for the SAM site, and the 10 is the tracking radar. The BB is more towards the inside and the 10 is towards the outside, because the 10 is more dangerous since it's a radar that's tracking me. The BB is just searching. It's not tracking me, so it's less dangerous, so it's more towards the inside. If you want to view more information about the targets, you can click this button right here. You can see the button says CURS, and when I click it, there are some letters that are below the targets. Both of them say SC, which is for scanning, which means they are just, their radar waves are hitting me, but they're not locked on or anything. It can also say LO for lock, and it can also say CW for continuous wave, and if it says CW, that means they have launched a missile at you. When something locks onto you, you can see it changes to an LO, and also it will blink like this. And when it fires at you, it will change to a CW, and it will also blink. You can see it just changed to CW. Now let's go over the control panel here. I already went over this button, which gives more detailed information. This button will only display the five most dangerous threats. So if you click it, the five most dangerous things will stay and everything else will go away. If you click the button that says EXPL, it will remove scanning radars. You can see there's a scanning radar for the SA-10 here. So when I click it, it will remove it. If you click the button that says TONO, it will remove the voice warning system. I will go more over the voice warning system later. Keep in mind, when you turn the tono on, you will still be able to hear the beeping sounds, these sounds right here. You just won't be able to hear the voice sounds. And if you click this button here, it records the threats that appear. I'm not sure how exactly it works or if it's modeled in DCS, but I don't think it matters that much. I think you could just leave it off. The last thing to go over for the RWR is the voice warning system. Every time something happens on the RWR, like if there is a new threat detected, or if there is a missile launch, it will play a voice warning sound. If I turn it off and on, you will be able to hear it say threat. Great. It was kind of quiet, but hopefully you were able to hear that. I have mine set to English, but you might have noticed that yours is in a different language. It might be in French or Spanish. I will show you how to change that now. Go to the settings in DCS and click Special and click on your Mirage F1. And then scroll down to ALR300 Voice Message Language. 
and you can select English, French, or Spanish. You might notice there's also this setting that says no change. This is a little bit confusing, but I will explain it now. If you have this set to no change, then the language will be based on a different setting. If you click gameplay and then click avionics language, you can see it can be native or English. If you have it set to native, then the language the RWR will be in will be based on what country your Mirage F1 is set to in the mission editor. According to the settings, it says that if you have the Mirage F1 assigned to Spain, then the language will be in Spanish, and if you have it assigned to any other country, it will be in French. This is kind of just to make it, I guess, if you want it to be more realistic. Now keep in mind, that only works if you have this set to no change, and if you have this setting set to native. If you have your Mirage setting as no change, and you have your avionics language as English, then it will just be English. What I do is I go to my Mirage settings, and I just have it set as English, so it's always in English no matter what. That was the ALR300 for the Mirage F1. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.